How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I fancied uh, reviewing this thing. They've just added it. It's part of the Season 2 pass so uh, you can you get it for free if you've bought the Season 2 pass or it's £5 uh, in English anyway for this and then another smaller truck that I'll, uh, I'll get onto pretty soon in the next day or so. Uh, but yeah, we'll take a look at it. So first things first is the engine. Uh, it's called a Tatra T813 I believe. Um, it's got the KZ GT engine, so S plus on the power, that's always been a pretty decent engine. The gearboxes are like special, advanced, special etc. I've put the advanced special in. There's no suspension, but to be fair the ground clearance does look pretty decent on it. Uh, tyres, thankfully, there is a couple of different options, all-terrain, off-road, muds, and the chained, and they're the mud version of the chained, which is like, yeah, my favourite out of all the chained. Um, Winches, uh, gone for, yeah, the most powerful one, the advanced one. Uh, diff lock's engageable, so it's not always on, but at least it's better than no diff, diff at all. Uh, the snorkels, you can actually see at the back of the cab, like there's two of them going up to the top, which is pretty much best case scenario. I kind of like them when they're at the back of the cab, because then if you're plunging your nose in first, you've got more room before it starts to drown. Um, Add-on wise, there's only a saddle high, and there's not a saddle low, which I think is pretty harsh because it's I would say overall it sits low enough that it would be alright with a saddle low uh, and then a big roof rack on the roof that's got like 450 repair points and 160 fuel and then it's also got like its own version of a two slot cargo thing uh, yeah roof stuff just various different lights uh, the front bumper I left that stock one on but I was just looking now like there's not much in it that seems to add like a slightly extra you know kind of underneath sort of um sort of like a sump protector kind of thing so again I don't know I mean I just left that because it kind of looks yeah that changes like the bottom of the bumper a bit and all that but I don't know it doesn't really bother me I quite like all three of them to be fair so I'll probably be mixing and matching as I go um, yeah that one was just parking lights this is exhaust the stock one just sticks out the bottom and to be honest given that I don't believe it is that smoky, but I was just going to say, it's like, I'd rather just, yeah, let the smoke go out the bottom of the truck, it's just not going to be in my way at all, there's going to be no, like, heat effect in my third person camera mode. Um, Paint-wise, that's actually like a custom paint job, it looks pretty cool, but it also looks a little bit dark, it's not that bright or anything, so for the most part, I actually went with some of the other paint schemes, but again, I don't dislike that at all, it was just for, like, the first look of the truck, I like it quite nice and bright, so you can see all the angles properly. That was black, grey and white, which I actually like all three colours. That's like the standard colour it comes in. That's the next one. I quite like, though, at least, how vibrant like the green and that is. Some of the Russian trucks have really faded paint. Again, that blue's a nice blue, like on the fuel tank and stuff and around the arches. And again, with that, as uh, I like quite like the brightness of the green. Uh, that's obviously like black uh, in those bits instead of being bright. But yeah, still, overall, light looks pretty nice. I like uh, all the paint schemes. I change once or twice here and there. Uh, yeah, so we'll take a look at it. I lost that first bit of footage, I had to recreate it, hence why a, uh, a roof rack just magically appeared. Looks-wise, I think it looks pretty cool. I like the look of it. It reminds me a little bit like the Dolphin. Just checking the steering. It hasn't got one of that stupid thing where it, like, turns the opposite way first. The steering appears to be pretty nice and responsive. Uh, yeah, in the cab, that mirror is too small. I can't really see. Not that I care, but, yeah. Um, I don't know, some kind of, like, super wank orgy thing going on there. But I've got windows at the back so I can see out. Got little uh, roof hatch escape things as well. Uh, yeah, again, that mirror, I can't see my tyres or anything. It's a bit small, but I'm not really bothered. Stick me head out the window. I can see enough of the garage door behind me. I can also see my tyres, so... That'll do. Uh, yeah, the horn, pretty nice, to be fair. Like, that sounds like it belongs on a truck like this. Not some squeaky little farty horn that sounds like it should be on some little Nissan Micra or something. Uh, the rev counter, I believe, is that small dial in the middle at the top. So between the two big dials, um, it's hard to tell because the dial's so small, but I believe it revs up is it to about 1500 or something. What was it? I think it was 510. Yeah, or almost 1500. It revs pretty slow, but it is what it is. I mean, uh, yeah, well, it's in the like the advanced special selection of gearboxes and stuff. If I'm honest, I would rather it had the high range gearboxes. And uh, I'll get into a couple of reasons why, but yeah, this is a couple of look at the trailers. Like I said, without a saddle high, you lose a lot of the trailers, obviously all the towable ones. But as far as these go, I've got, yeah, that wide boy, the 8th slot, and that big fat heavy thing as well. So it's a shame, because like I said, it's only got 50 odd inch tyres or something. It must sit about, you can even see from like where the trailers connect that they were floating above the saddle high. 
and that saddle high has been made to be raised up compared to the saddle low whereas some trucks that have both it doesn't change between the saddle low and saddle high because the truck sits quite high anyway um, yeah so it's just basically like I think that's a little bit harsh they could have put a saddle low on and I mean again who cares like just let us use the bloody trucks it's not like this thing can't physically have one in real life it's just they've decided we're not allowed one and uh, yeah I don't like that um, going through that mud though I went in high gear through there but it or, or I believe I left it in a auto in fifth out of fifth to be honest for a little while yeah, motor through there, no problem really. Again, it's a little bit slower than like the off-road Dolphin obviously flies through there in high gear. Up there though, it even went, yeah, there for a gear change from 4th to 5th and it didn't die. <laughs> so I was quite surprised. I was like, yeah, that's not bad. That appears to be uh, pretty good. Most things probably would have, well, the Derry, for example, can barely get up there in anything. Struggles enough in first gear, let alone trying to jump from 4th to 5th. Going down here though for the tree test. We get one, that was it, one. And I came down here to what I did this like a little early, I had a little rally around with it before I even started uh, getting the footage for this video. Yeah, I got one both times. I then put it in high gear just to see, like, no. So, worst case, you'll knock one over. If you've got a trailer and everything, that'll add a bit of extra weight. But yeah, all I'm mentioning that for is, uh, again, it kind of implies that even though the power to weight is S+, plus, and it's probably going to be anyway with the KZGT engine, but it's clearly like this thing ain't that heavy. It's not as heavy as the Dolphin, definitely not as heavy as the Zix. And to me, that can hinder it in various situations. Like one nice thing that you at least gain when a truck is very weighty is it, it handles and feels more realistic and nicer to drive, but it also, it creates more of its own grip because it plants itself down into the terrain harder, so it bites on better. Yeah, a little bit slow through there. I mean, it got through with no issues, but it, yeah, it, the stuff has got through there quicker again. I believe, like, the off-road Dolphin, etc., flew through there quicker. Um, yeah, I mean, for example, like, the P16 is a very heavy truck, and that hasn't even got all-wheel drive, but it's a very nice truck to drive because it feels quite realistic in the way it handles, and again, it generates, like, its own grip. And the Navistar is another one that's a very nice truck to drive just because it feels correctly weighted and in proportion and all the rest of it. Uh, going over the rocks here, you'll see a little bit of it, like it's bumping over. I didn't take any damage or anything, but I cut a little bit of this out because I've got a much better rock thing later. Like on Erska River, there's just a better selection of rocks I can go flying over. But it didn't take any suspension damage the whole time. Again, to be fair, because it goes a bit slower, like if it was in the high range, it'd probably be going fast enough where it could. But nonetheless, its suspension is clearly, you know, more than strong enough. Anti-terrorist barricade, it just kind of nudged it out of the way. But again, if you sort of when you whack them at real high speed is when it really starts to uh, damage your vehicle. So you're going through here as well. Everything does go very slow at the start there, but the lack of weight in it feels like it's hindering it just a little bit. And it's not like it weighs, you know, as much as the air in a crisp packet, but it just isn't that heavy. If you know what I mean, it should be heavier considering it's like a another eight-wheel drive, like, all-wheel drive military off-road vehicle type thing. Uh, that current, I, it might have pushed it a tiny bit, but nothing special. Like, again, it's got enough weight that it's not going to just start floating off down the river or something. But, yeah, I mean, it's still got over there. Like, I certainly don't think it'd get stuck or anything, but it's certainly not going to set any uh, lap records or anything like that either. And then just a last little tap into this barricade, and, yeah, I kind of ran over it as well, and it didn't delete and smash my suspension to pieces um, I just went to try this Like I used to smash through here quite a lot to run them pumpkins over and I used to take a hell of a lot of damage when I'd knock through them fences and stuff took a little whack there but nothing too special this is just this field's pretty like slows a lot of trucks down so I was just quite enjoying watching the uh, each individual wheel kind of bob up and down it's got pretty nice suspension in that sense I would say uh, yeah I went for this tree test because it's just a bit smoother flat ground not one, but bounce off that. I couldn't get more than one. And this, again, is one of the main reasons to get yourself a goddamn horse or a vehicle. He adds a bit of weight. We get a few more trees down. But yeah, so we got another three. And then that, that tree is, like, a little bit extra juicy. I've noticed that with a few trucks that can get the first. I believe the step toe did the same. Uh, it went back this way. First three, and then that one again. 
couldn't quite have it. But yeah, it's uh, what did we at least tripled our tree killing abilities when we got a goddamn horse with us. So next up, the old snow test on Northport. Going through there, it felt like it slowed down a tad there, and I don't. A lot of trucks don't really. Normally, it's pretty normal to now, and then it hits what I would call super snow, where everything kind of slows down. Climbing over the barriers, though, I mean, plenty of nose clearance. It's got the chains, they bite on well. It's got eight wheel drive. It's, yeah, like, good case scenario for that, and it got over with no issues. Uh, up to, like, barrier test number two, where it's a little bit taller, because it just scuffed its nose a bit, but it didn't matter, didn't stop it. it climbed over. The nice thing is, the distance between the second and third axle is pretty short, and those fuel tanks sit quite nice and high, so, you know, short of, like, getting beached on a wall or something, like, you going to struggle to get beached in the middle, which is nice. Uh, yeah, going up here into this little super snow test and through these bushes and everything. Uh, did pretty well, fine through there. You can definitely see, though, that bush is uh, slowing it down a bit more, which a heavier vehicle would probably fight it a bit better. But overall, I mean, that, yeah, didn't take that long. Certainly better than like, a lot of vehicles we've seen recently, like that HX520, the Cat CT681, the Brigadier. And you see, even having the chain, like, I was a little bit to the left of that rock, really. But because I had the chain, I knew I could hard steer right and sort of climb up the rock. If I didn't have chain there, I would have just kept slipping off to the left until I rolled, guaranteed. Because I've, I've done the, this little test with every single truck in the game, and believe me, I have rolled on that rock a lot of times. Um, yeah, jumped off the other side, no issues, didn't catch its nose or anything like that. Didn't go all weird and start trying to tip over. So... Can it jump the wall? I wasn't sure at this point. Bumped up there, took a little bit of damage, got the first wheel up, got the second, didn't beach, kind of seesawed its way over, got the third axle on the wall and we're good to go. So yeah, did pretty well that, I think that'd get over every time. Um, sometimes, like with the faster vehicles, they almost bump into the pipes and, you know, launch themselves up in the air and have enough forward momentum to get over, but they probably wouldn't every time. This feels more like it climbed the pipes, climbed the wall, got the first and second axle over, seesawed, etc. So yeah, and through the trees as well. I've even got the roof rack on to add a bit of height and those bars at the side of the truck and that. I didn't catch any branches. It punched through there like pretty decent, I would say. And then uh, yeah, started climbing up this hill. I'll cut this a little bit out because I'll be up in the mountains in a minute anyway. Um, yeah, I mean the cargo test again though. I don't really like using this trailer for the cargo test. I'd rather just a uh, like a sideboard semi-trailer. But turning wise, I'm blipping the throttle a bit to try and help it, but to its credit, just by the skin of its teeth, it nearly scuffed that wall, but it made it in the uh, turning circle. I don't really know if or how much that trailer will hinder it as far as turning circle goes, because in theory it is just rotating on the, uh, the saddle, so it shouldn't matter too much, but I just, yeah, this trailer is a much heavier trailer, like, the Colobber happily handle these trailers, the P16... Yeah, that sort of stuff, but the, I mean, look at it, you just look at the size of the trailer to the truck, and then factor in that it isn't a very heavy truck. It's a lot of trailer to be hauling behind you that's just extra weight for the same cargo capacity. The fact that this trailer isn't six slot is ridiculous. Like, look at all the little gaps they're leaving to just spread it out to be a five slot, and it's got that little extra step deck bit at the top. So this should easily, if it's going to punish you and make you have this fat heavy trailer over a sideboard semi-trailer, then at least give us the six cargo slots. Then I would handle the uh, the extra weight, I'd suck it up, because it's better than keep fucking around trying to unflip a, uh, a ramp flatbed. I'm going across here for the old snow test. And again, well, I suppose, yeah, this is like part of the reason I don't even really like using this trailer for these... Not to say that the sideboard semi can't get hooked there, but... Yeah, I mean, this thing's just weighs a lot and it's now got its, um, like, the trailer legs kind of hooked into this little brow of the hill, I believe. Of course, prioritise all the, uh, all the breakable trees first. So, get me winch on. And, uh, I basically just winched enough to get those legs definitely over the brow of the hill and then to see, like, could this thing handle it? And to be fair... Again, it's not rapid, but low range, diffs on, high low, um, it is going forward. There's no doubt about it, and I do believe, other than that little beaching on the brow of the hill, like, that it could get all the way through there. 
And as I say, I would sort of say, yeah, it's unfair that it's had to have this trailer. However, that's the cards we've been dealt. That's all they're letting it have. So that's a real world issue we're going to come up with. Like, it's just annoying as in, I could be halfway through other missions or I could have other sideboard semi-trailers around the map. And now I can't kind of, you know, pick up where I left off with a different truck with this if I've used a saddle low trailer. And it's, yeah, it's just one of them things where it's just, I don't know, I don't know why they do it. It's an odd thing. If you've already created a game and already sold it to millions of people, why would you then limit the options your own game has? Especially when it's a game. It's not like real life where you have to upgrade a car to make it go faster and the company has to invest money it's like yeah just type buttons and say sod it have a saddle low like it doesn't even need to make sense in the real world they just have to and it would in this case um yeah pulling the trailer through there i mean again a little slow but it certainly wasn't getting stuck or anything for the water test it hit a few patches now where you could see it slow down there i just kind of dropped it in high in the end but well, I wouldn't say amazing through water, but that being said, I don't feel like it'd ever get stopped or anything in water until it's drowning. Squeeze through this little gap. That's what she said. Uh, yeah, all right through there. Though. It's not wide enough that it's like gonna start having to do what like the P16 did and stuff. That's like that little dip down there is like the original super snow. <laughs> That's like the first taste of it on this game. But again, it was that tiny little patch, and that's it. It kind of made sense, though. Because as it's like a little dip, it's as if, like, yeah. The snow's kind of drifted in there, got a bit deeper. And it's a bit harder to drive through. Going along this little lane, though. Um, to be fair, once you're in these, like, snowy tracks, I believe even stuff like the Cat C CT681, the HX520, etc., could all get up into high gear and stuff going down there. Normally I go into high gear for quite a lot of sections, but as is the case with this advanced special, you're best off staying in auto. If it can get to fifth, it's quicker in fifth than high gear. Um, interior view, yeah, that tree in front of me, the little half size one, didn't even get close to even the bottom of the tree there. So yeah, view wise, very good. You sit high enough that you can easily see over the dash. Pretty good view out there. Again, can see me tyres. Can have a good look around. There's plenty of windows. Yeah, and I mean, there is plenty of windows, there isn't really any blind spots or anything like that. It's uh, pretty well as far as that goes. It'd be quite a nice truck, I reckon, if for people who do quite like doing interior view gameplay. So the mirror looked alright then, I could sort of tell what was going on. The one on the other side, yeah. It's a bit too small for me to be able to like make much out on it. I can kind of see stuff, but not not that well. But again, I spend the vast majority of my life in the uh, third-person view, so it doesn't really bother me either way. A uh, little bump on its nose going over that river, but it didn't really stop it or anything. It didn't fully dig in. It just, yeah, took a bit of a whack. And especially, like, you see, bits like this, I'd rather just a high-range gear, uh, the high-range gearbox, and stick it in high or something through there. Or just auto. Um, yeah, because the truck doesn't weigh a lot, I don't like it'd be quite a good candidate for high because it would make quite a lot of sense. Going over this rock bridge, it stopped for a sec there, but if you could see, the back tyre was just still bumping down the other rock as the front was going up. So if you imagine like the front and the back tyres being lifted, it's going to kind of lift a lot of the weight off the two middle axles. But for all the rest of it, yeah, it bumped up all the things, no problem. Like, there's no issues. That first bit just. Like I said, just so happened to be the perfect bit where it was like touching the front and rear tyres. I'm going up here through snow. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's one of them again where you could put it in high and it's going to tick along at that speed, or you're going to go, yeah, low range diffs on. Uh, I believe once I go back into auto now, like I can't get it out of first gear. Normally it lets you change up to second, but with the code and whatever, it's just saying, nope. You're staying in first in that snow. No problem fitting under there, though. Not many trucks catch that, I believe. Yeah, the P16 might have. There was one or two others as well. I can't remember. Maybe the Colob. Yeah, I believe that gets caught under there as well. Uh, yeah, again, crossing there. I mean, no issues as far as like trying to tip or getting through the snow. Just 
not the most rapid, but it'll do. Uh, right, death mud section. So, low range of diffs on. It's, I'll be honest, it's already not a good sign when you already have to go low range diffs on before I've even reached this first puddle. And yeah, now it's like, that's not great. Put it sort of high, low, medium, low, low, low. I think the best balance is medium, low. You've got a tiny bit of wheel spin going on, but you kind of, yeah. It's probably nice to have a little bit. High, low was a bit just more wheel spin than anything. And low, low was just so little power that you may as well increase it a bit. Um, yeah, as you can see though, I mean, it's going pretty bloody slow, and then about now I get stuck. Or it might start creeping ahead a little bit, yeah, there, but... I would officially consider this like, nah, I'm not going to sit here and like... I wouldn't accept this as a speed I want to be playing this game at, so... Yeah, I'd be recovering or doing something, obviously, if it was a little patch, yeah. I'll winch my way out of it, but I would not be enjoying like 0.1 mile an hour. checking it again like that. No, it's definitely not having it. And I think partly again is the lack of weight, like at least if it was really heavy, it'd be squidging its way through all that sloppy mud and it'd find the hard terrain under the mud because obviously at some point in this game, even though the surface layer is all soft terrain, you eventually reach what is, you know, solid ground and this hasn't got enough to kind of squidge its way in there. Looked a bit, it looked like it wanted to tip a little bit to the left there, and it didn't, but it just it cocked a wheel and kind of thought about it. However, stuff like the Royal and the ANK, I believe, tipped about now, and it looked pretty fine and smooth there, so maybe just had a bit of an awkward wiggle. Uh, going for the nose test. It wasn't liking that one. But again, now it's not flipping, certainly stuff like the... Uh, the Royal, I reckon, and the ANK would have flipped there. Go for it again. And I wouldn't say it's got, like, a bad nose situation going on, but... I mean, if you look at it, there is, you know, like a third of the cab in front of the front wheels. That section there definitely favours things that just, you know, like, there's barely anything. Like, the front of the vehicle is, like, where the front of the front tyres are touching. So this is kind of like the secondary nose test, and it gets over there, no issues, which a lot of stuff like, was it the HX520, etc. Cat CT681 got kind of beached on that bit and dug their nose in and all sorts. So yeah, not the end of the world, it's just that first one is like a V-shaped sort of drop. It's worst case scenario for anything with any kind of nose, really. Go for the rolling test, though. Oh no. However... So even though there's not a lot of weight, there must be a little bit more weight low down than high up because if there was, you know, half its weight kind of in the cab and the roof, etc., it would have easily just stayed on its roof then. The fact that the tyres just about had enough to carry itself over. Um, yeah, there, the turning circle, though. I'd say overall, I don't think the turning circle is amazing. Like, some trucks have had to, but there's not that many that I've had to do a three-point turn there. Quite a lot of them I can just do, like, a sweeping turn around the corner. Climbing up here as well, this, uh, yeah, well, yeah, like, it was called the White Western Star Hill. So that was the first one that attempted it and succeeded, but I thought at the time that was quite an achievement. <laughs> and there ain't much that don't get up here, to be honest. I think uh, it was the Freightliner thing. That was a goddamn disaster. Uh, yeah, as you can see there, though, I, st I was scooting over to the left pretty quickly. But it still did, yeah, cock a wheel. It started to go, and that was it. I rolled. But again, at least it got back to its wheels. And yeah, after a while, when you keep getting back to your wheels, it's like... The odd one or two could be coincidence, all the rest of it, but when it starts, you know, just becoming a pattern, it's like... There's more to it than just luck, if it keeps happening. Um, once I was sort of aimed straight up that hill, though, no issues, which I didn't think there would be, because the chains and everything are good at doing stuff like that, sort of climbing up hills. Pretty steep stuff as well. Here, though, yeah. 
it was wobbling too much and it rolled. Pretty nice little flip. See, this I'd say is part luck at least. Obviously, I just happened to hit that tree as I'm on my wheels. But if you're if well, if you did see the Zix 605R review video. I drove up here and because it doesn't have chained it got stuck about now whereas this because it has got chained you can just go straight up like, I mean that's not silly far off vertical there and again short gap between like the second and third axles so there's no beaching going on it just kind of once you get the terrain between those two axles it appears to have a slight bit more weight in front so then yeah it seesaws its nose down and you carry on so as far as that goes it's pretty nice I don't think beaching it in that sense will be much of an issue. Uh, yeah, next up, the old quarry. Of course, I've got a goddamn professional behind me. Don't leave home without one anyway, certainly not this quarry, because turns out he's, uh, he's paid for himself <laughs> quite a few times over at this quarry. Uh, yeah, cutting through here, I mean, it was going alright to about now in auto. I think I start to change it, yeah, but I'm still holding L1 down, so it hasn't actually gone into high-low yet. But then when I let off, it dropped down to first, so I was like, sod it. Low-range diffs on. And again, I mean, you have to go slower, but low-range diffs on, it's clearly just driving through here with no issues now, so... I can't knock it, I'm just not as keen on the advanced special being in this truck. I've already got that in the Zix, I've got it in Bruce, I've got it in the Clubs, like... I've got that area covered. I know I've got the higher engine, the Dolphin, but why can't I have another Dolphin? Try and drop the hammer as much as you can. Well, like it started leaning, like not leaning to the left, but it just, I don't know. Yeah, it, like, it kept pulling to the left a bit there. But again, though, I do, like, the steering, it's not perfect or anything, but it's nice, if you know what I mean. It's snappy enough, like I said, it's not got that stupid thing where it turns the opposite way first or any of that, so it's certainly, like, it's, it, well, more than workable. Like, yeah, it's nice. It's decent enough. It's uh, never really been too much of an issue. Like I said, there's, overall, I'd say it'd be nice to have a bit more turning so a bit less of a turning circle but just day to day going down the map you hit a bump and you need to correct a bit like it's pretty yeah snappy enough and precise enough that it's not much of a problem crawling through there yeah well you hear it's bleeding a bit of power yeah, I mean lacking those diffs like if the diffs were always on That'd be quite nice, especially that it's got the advanced special, because that already slows it down to begin with. And then on top of that, you have to go into the low, into the advanced special version of low range to get the diffs. I uh, got those slabs though, and uh, normally I like to like keep my speed as I go through there, but because I put the bloody sideboard thing on, it offered me that first, so I had to change to the trailer, so I lost a bit of momentum, but it crawled out there, no issue, like, I don't think it'd be a, uh, a problem. So, going up here, I end up attempting this twice, you'll see why, this is why I left this first one in. Start turning up the hill, got my horse up there, ready. As you can see, it's not quite biting in again, I believe the lack of weight doesn't help. Uh, I was turning, I thought it might tip there, it's pretty decent that it didn't. Um, but yeah, I've gone basically a lot wider on the corner I'd like to, as you can see, the terrain to the left of me it kind of flattens out the lip of that first hill whereas where I've gone now it's a much sharper angle so I mess around a little bit trying to get it like scooted over in the end I, was like, I wasn't happy with it so I went all the way back round got to here again and uh, just yeah turned in a little bit early and I believe now yeah I fling a winch out it looks like it's trying to understeer a little bit again and I'd go a bit wide so yeah the loaf pretty handy in that situation just to uh, pull my nose kind of tighter into the corner so yeah as you can see now at least the brow of this hill is a little bit more smoothed out however get to here now to be fair there is a fair amount of other vehicles that get to there they don't like this ramped flatback pulling them up here and again I wish I could have a sideboard semi-trailer I don't want to bring that big fat 
like one I was using earlier for the cargo test. And I was like, sod it, a lot of others have done this ramp flatbed. If they can't have a saddle low, then this is what they're going to have to have to attempt for the sakes of the test. Um, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, it's a good job the loafs are goddamn professional and knows how to dig some seriously meaty loaf hole, because... I'm ripping, like, the bottom half of the loaf <laughs> through the terrain. That's how, I mean, look at him. He's a goddamn beast, but... That was some serious, like... Yeah, the loaf pulls most things up there easier than that, as in they're offering more assistance. That was like 99% loaf and 1% this thing. And anyway, I was messing around for a bit and it was like the trailer just wasn't really moving. So I just wanted to try something quickly before I uh, tried the loaf from like that section. Stuck a winch on it and I suppose I had a little bit of a run up, but I managed to get the trailer over. And then in theory, I could have just obviously kept like rocking back and forth, hoovering the winch in. But I went back down the hill because now I kind of moved the trailer. Stuck a winch on the loaf. And yeah, I, get, I mean, there's, I just don't believe I would have got up there without the loaf unless I did that thing with a winch. Which is doable in some situations, but obviously then you got the like the physics sort of can lock in place and then when you attach a winch to the trailer it can suddenly start trying to roll back and yeah it just opens up you now go on to the next chapter of like potential bugs that can bite you and so on that's the thing it's sort of like a bit of a chain reaction and a knock-on effect with some of these bugs that I get as well it's like if that didn't happen I wouldn't have had to have done this and then that wouldn't have happened and so on and so on um yeah it couldn't even quite I believe get the rest of the way up the top of the uh, quarry hill so I just flung a winch out to that sort of telegraph pole thing there. Going around here going to try and get it up the third quarry hill I'll be honest I had very low hopes for it now with uh, how much it struggled on the first and second hill I mean again to throw it out there the Cat CT681 got up the first, second and third quarry hill the Derry <laughs> couldn't even get up the first. Well, it did once when the loaf pulled it up there, but the Derry could not physically do it. Yeah, this thing got to here. I mean, again, I've edited it. I've tried to keep the video as short as I can, but I tried, you know, high, low, medium, low, 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 auto. Tried high gear, but it was obviously stolen. Uh, so I've got a goddamn horse up there as usual, he's in his little loaf hole. And again, it's a good job he showed up because he's now putting the, the majority of the effort in at this point. I believe at any point going up now, if I disconnect the winch, it would just stop. If not, I'd roll back down the hill a bit, really. He's a beast, he even got me up to that point. And now, once you're on the brow of the hill, I was like, oh, I don't know, it's looking a bit better, but nope. I mean, again, it's not the worst. I'm not hating on it, but... Yeah, it's sort of back to what I said a few weeks ago. When are we going to get the good stuff, the stuff that isn't punished? Like, in real life, the vast majority of limitations can be solved with money. That's just the way there is. That's why a Nissan Micra is a few grand and a space shuttle is, I don't know... 400 million or whatever, it's like you keep spending enough money and you can make stuff do some pretty crazy shit and yeah, in this game it's just like why do you keep giving us kind of run of the mill ish trucks trucks we've already got, like I personally, up to now, I would say I, I prefer the Dolphin to this I mean even now like I could not make it round that corner this just didn't have the guts it didn't have the grip to bite and turn so I could get back to the road section I even moved the loaf out of the way, that didn't help. And then, yeah, I tried to winch that tree because obviously the trailer's a twat. And uh, it tipped it, I was like, sod it. It needed the help of losing the cargo there anyway, to be fair, because I just couldn't... Well, you can see now, even without the cargo. Like, can barely move forward, man. I'm in low range, high low, with the diffs on and everything, and it's like, look at it. So, yeah, well, by the time I'd finished doing this t testing in the quarry, I was a bit kind of deflated on the truck because it was like, well, long story short, I've got 
plenty of trucks that can tow cargo better than this then. That can tow an empty bloody trailer better than this, so... That kind of now cuts it out of doing any of that. Not that it can have a saddle low anyway, so that kind of half cuts it out of a load of my missions already. So yeah, it's... I don't know. Anyway, next up is the, uh, the ice test. And yeah, I mean, long story short, it's too light to generate grip, but it's too heavy <laughs> not to break the ice. Kind of the worst of both worlds in that sense. Tried to give it a little nudge, <laughs> it kind of just slipped up the back. That's what she said. Um, yeah, ended up sitting on the roof. Long story short, uh, I tipped over, the loaf got out of there, because he's a beast. And then I tried to tow it out. I was just testing there, like, again, it's... You used to be able to winch, and the truck would drive, but now you have to choose one or the other. And it was better to just not hoover the winch in, and that thing was kind of trying to reverse as well. Uh, yeah, I went to go for it again, it was looking good, like, no. It dropped in, and that's it, there's just... The tyres that aren't big enough, not saying that it's got small tyres and that, like, the dolphin would get stuck now and stuff. You've got to be going up to stuff like the Antarctic, really, for big enough tyres. But, yeah, it breaks through pretty much every time. <laughs> Life had to risk it. You made it, though. So, yeah, I mean, if, if and when I'm going to be using this thing, I, yeah, I'll try and use it, obviously. I'll be using it on various things, but... Yeah. But I don't know why by now it couldn't just be better. Like again, we had the dolphin that we could have theoretically got on Black River. And now with the sharp incline in difficulty, well again, not difficulty, trollishness and slowness on the new maps, this is the truck that I just wouldn't say is quite up to the standard of the dolphin, so we're getting harder maps, but crapper trucks. Yeah, it did flip that twin steer, which was quite nice though. Uh, going through this river test though on flooded foothills, no real issues there. It's it's not the tallest truck in the world, so even though the snorkel's in, in what I would would be my first choice of location, um, yeah, like overall a taller vehicle is obviously yeah, going to have more height on the snorkel naturally. And yeah, I mean, it's not rapid throughout a little mud bit at the end, but it got through it. It's not like it got stuck or anything. Yeah, this is like a better rock test, I reckon, on Ersk River. It's just a better chance to show you like all the suspension jiggling up and down. Does it take damage? Does it start beaching on the rocks? And as you can see, that fuel tank in the middle sits nice and high, but it's just not really an issue. The uh, I like the suspension and the amount of suspension travel, considering it has only got stock suspension. There is no upgrade. I think it did pretty decent there. But I will say, if I was also pulling a trailer... I think things would have gone a lot differently there because it now hasn't got the weight to haul that trailer whilst climbing over rocks but as far as like a little exploration vehicle I mean that's where maybe I'll be using it in the end put a roof rack on it but then you can't add a maintenance thing to the back or anything so it's kind of hindered in that sense I could tow the trailer behind me I suppose um, yeah on to White River though I mean that's top speed test obviously it's pretty slow so I cut 99% of the runway out jump down here normally I just have a little jump and then I'll go back grab the loaf and have another go, but when it landed this time, I was like, oh, that's actually a pretty kind of nice test to now send in the loaf and uh, see how easy it can roll it. Decided to bring the twin steer this time. I mean, again, uh, this is why he gets out of the loaf. He's like, yoink. <laughs> Gives the twin steer a flick. Not only that, but then he gets himself in position so that the twin steer doesn't over roll. I mean, again, what a good damn horse of a vehicle. Get yourself a loaf. Never mind this Tatra thing. He's like, Pops out of there, and he's ready to go. We're just going around saving lives. And given so far, like the lack of weight of the vehicle, uh, I wouldn't say I was particularly worrying about this, like that it'd be difficult to flip. So like, stand back. Stand back, twins there. I've got a goddamn job to do. Where are your winch point? Oh, of course, you're over there. That makes so much sense. I was just looking as well. Like, oh, the front of the cap is kind of nearest to the twin stair. 
I wasn't sure whether to winch from the middle point or just winch from like the front of the truck basically. But yeah, from the middle point it didn't really start trying to like seesaw the truck round, it just got back to its wheels. So yeah, came back again though. A loaf little flick again, gives it a little tug, lands on his wheels. I was hoping to do a little rescue, but then when I kind of reverse near it, it just started tipping anyway. I was going to try and tow it from like the nose of the vehicle, a bit like I did in the loaf review with uh, Bruce. But it rolled and landed at that point, so I was like, fair enough. I suppose at this point it gives me a good little chance to try out, like, winch it from its front end, at the top winch point, and see does it just kind of lever it around or will it tip it? Tips it pretty easily. So yeah, as far as that goes, it seems pretty decent at getting back to its wheels and it's not hard to flip. Uh, so, a bit of a drowning test. This is where, like, I prefer the placement of the snorkels, because if it had the same snorkels but at the front of the truck, they would be going underwater now. And even though it's, you know, not a massive difference, but you've got then those extra few inches. <laughs> a few inches help. That's definitely what she said. Um, yeah. The only thing I would say, though, with double snorkels is if one of them go underwater then it starts taking damage, which I suppose sort of makes sense, but I'm just saying, like, you don't, you know, get the benefit of, like, one sticking out, one isn't, and you get away with it. So, I mean, that's about the point. I'm, as near as makes no difference, fully underwater, it is just my little periscope snorkels sticking out. And reversing out of the water as well is not, doesn't feel like it's struggling or anything, it's wading out there pretty fine. I didn't even stick the diffs on either, so... Probably would have been a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit quicker about it, mate. Well, maybe not quicker, but smoother. All right, go for the drowning test. Let's just quickly fix it with the uh, the old life again, just saving the day as usual, saving me time because back in the day, I'd have to now recover that vehicle to get a fresh engine, and then try and get to the bottom of the cliff without damaging the engine. Yeah, drowning test again. It's not the world's tallest vehicle or anything, so, uh, I, you know, it did pretty well. Went in pretty far. <laughs> don't even need to say it. It's got some weird winch points at the back. Like, I don't really... I don't know if I'd go as far as to say it's a good thing. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing either. I mean, sod it. An extra winch point is an extra winch point, but... They're just kind of like two winch points pretty close to each other at the back. One of them's, like, kind of off-centre, as if... There should be another one the other side that's slightly off centre, but yeah, I, I don't really know what the deal is with that. The loaf can tow it out of there though, at least now I could turn the engine on as you see when it was still kind of half drowning. Started taking a bit of damage. It's funny again though, I'm better off not hoovering the winch in, put the handbrake on and just accelerate with the loaf. He'll stay still because he's got the handbrake on, but it now makes that thing reverse instead of just being a dead weight. Um, yeah, last start I just sort of sod it, we'll go for it. Yeah, see if we can cross this kind of river, sea bit, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, long story short, obviously get a loaf pretty easy in the sideboard. Trying to balance it on the roof rack was not that easy. Certainly nowhere near as easy as getting it onto, like, the Zix. So it starts drowning. And obviously at this point, you'd be like, well, that's it. There's no way it's getting over. But again, we've got a pair of horses. They know how to get things done. So I was like, sorry, I'll go for the uh, OG loaf. Stick a winch from the back of the loaf to the front of the Zix. That's just the winch points it offered me. Tried to start the engine. It said stalled. Put my handbrake on. Accelerator's not doing anything because the engine's off. Start pressing triangle to like hoover the winch in. We zombie winch it. And I have to say, to its credit, it zombie winches pretty bloody well. Like, it's just ticking along now. Probably not much slower than the vehicle itself would travel anyway. Like, yeah, I was looking around and thinking, well, that's not bad. It's pretty fluent. Like, sometimes it can be a bit jerky where it'll kind of like, you know, power, dip, power, dip, power, dip. This is just, like, it's doing all right. It's pretty good. The old loaf. You know, he's had a captain his ship. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. <laughs> that's right, boys. You can do it all. He wants to go and investigate some secret islands. That's what he does. Have mine lost. 
So we call that episode Loaf. Be a giant screaming loaf come out of the trees and kick the shit out. What was it on that thing in the end? Can't remember. Polar bear, I think. I think I was hoping it was a T-Rex. I was seeing if I get the loaf back on the roof because I, I kind of scooted him forward a bit. Again, I mean, look at this. You think, oh, he's going to tip. He's he's done. <laughs> he's a goddamn horse with a vehicle is what he is. That ain't even packed. That is just pure loafiness. Like, hanging on for dear life like a goddamn professional. Even I was looking like, really? <laughs> Doing pretty bloody well if I do say so myself. Like, that is what you can get yourself if you get a goddamn professional. You don't mess around. Anyway. Can we get up here? It's looking pretty good. To be fair, between chained all-wheel drive, obviously in this situation I can use low-range diffs on. Yeah, pretty good. No issues climbing up there. There's the old Hummer still sticking out the rock. One day, still holding out hope that it'll fly out of there. Going up as well. Can't leave Captain Loaf behind. I mean, look at this. Not only does he get up there, he successfully changes up a gear halfway up a hill that's too steep for most vehicles. He's absolutely a goddamn beast. Um, yeah, it's time. Go for a little jump. I've earned it. And again, it's just, I oh, would definitely rather a high range. <laughs> Dribbles off there a bit. Look at the loaf now. Positions himself. Why? Make sure this thing doesn't over tip. Goddamn horse. But then, he, so he took a bullet. Had to lay down his own life. For that Tatra. An OG loaf. Like, no. Speak to me, loaf. Bam. Very good, bro. Bit of CPR on the way down. He's all good. He's still alive. Oh yeah, I was just like, the rocks, again, the loaf horn, it can kind of move rocks out of the way. It was probably moving all the ones under the Tatra. The ones, like, obviously to the side of me are just kind of rolling back down to where they were. For no apparent reason, just kind of reversed it into it and drown it. <laughs> That'll conclude today's proceedings. It does go pretty deep. That's definitely what she said. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's the thing. In conclusion, like, I don't hate it or anything like that, but I'm just saying I can't really see anything new that it brings to the table. That I haven't already got. I mean, yeah, okay, it's like a dolphin with a roof rack. I've already invented a dolphin with a roof rack. It's called Dolphin and Loaf, and it works perfectly. So I didn't need that corner of the market, like, saturated. I've already got it sorted. Got it loaferated. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if you, well, money-wise as well, by the way, is that 250-odd grand fully upgraded, which is pretty bloody expensive. I mean, it's a better value than, like, the HX520 that I believe was a similar price and is just not as good. Um, yeah, there's the two vehicles. The one next to it as well is, like, the other one in the pack, that one that I'll be sort of reviewing or doing something on pretty damn soon. Um, yeah, the description there just says it was kind of originally supposed to be a 4x4. By the time they'd finished, it was like an 8x8 military all-terrain vehicle thing. And, yeah, it doesn't really feel like that as much as... I mean, put it this way. If you want a Dolphin that's got an advanced special gearbox, get yourself a John. John is a beast. I only don't drive John much because he's slow and I prefer the high range which the Dolphin has, but I don't know, I think John would have hauled that ramped flatbed up the quarry a bit better than this. I still think John got stuck on the third quarry hill, but yeah, you know what I mean, so that's the thing. If you get in the second season pass, then you're going to get it kind of for free, so to speak, within that anyway. If you're not getting the second season pass, you can buy it for five quid with the other vehicle. I don't know, if you're going to still put a lot of time into the game, maybe you can get your money out of it, but all I'm saying is it doesn't bring anything new to the table, so if you're not sure and all the rest of it, it's like you're not really missing out on anything. If you've got access to mods, there's mods that are better than this, better equipped, work better, etc, etc. And yeah, that's about it really. Um, 
that's kind of my call on it. Like, again, I'm not hating on it. It's just I was expecting a little bit more by now, to be honest. But anyway, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a beast. And I'll be back soon.